Talking With My Mouthful is supported by Abio Kitchen and their chef-approved line of stainless steel cookware. Abio is committed to providing the cookware to help you become a more confident home cook. The Abio set comes with the five pans you need to do 95% of your cooking at half the price of comparable sets. The one and I use it in our home and we love it. Visit abiokitchen.com to learn more. So Renee, with everyone stocking up so they can do this hunker down in place for who knows how long, do you know the two things I was never able to buy? No, what? Distilled water for my CPAP. So apparently everyone in the world has sleep apnea besides me. Or maybe they're just at home ironing a lot. Nervous energy. Oh yeah, that's true. You need distilled water for ironing. And the other thing is get this flour. All the stores we went to, four or five in New York and also in Connecticut, completely sold out of flour. That makes perfect sense to me. Flour sold out here Mm. as well. Everybody I know is baking bread. It's just, it's calming. There's that amazing quote from MFK Fisher. She says, no yoga exercise, no meditation in a chapel filled with music will get rid of your blues better than the humble task of making your own bread. Yeah, well... I know a little something about crazy bread making, don't I? (laughs) Well, we know about bread baking. You know about crazy. The crazy. (laughs) Hello, I'm David Leet, founder of the website Leet's Culinaria. And I'm Renee Shetler, editor-in-chief. And this is Talking With My Mouthful. Today's episode, we're all bread, all the time. And who better to shoot the dough with us than Zoe Francois? She's co-author of seven books on baking bread, including the seminal Artisan Bread in Five Minutes a Day. I like to think of her as sort of the Buddha of bread baking. (laughs) Zoe, welcome. Hi, thank you. I love that description. (laughs) It's perfect. Zoe, I have to tell you, the bread section of Leeds Culinaria has exploded. People are Mm -hmm. making bread like crazy as we all hunker down now. And the number one most popular recipe is your five-minute artisan bread. I mean, hundreds and hundreds more people are making it now. Yeah. Yeah, we're finding it on our website as well. I mean, I think, like Renee said, it's so comforting. It's Mm -hmm. that, but it's also such a useful skill to have, um, especially in these times when people are actually in their houses feeding themselves. I think they're learning new skills and what better skill to have than be able to bake bread for yourself and your family. Absolutely. Mm. So for those, I don't know, six people left on the planet who don't know (laughs) what five minute artisan bread is, can, can you explain what that is? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, my co-author Jeff Hertzberg, is a physician. Um, And when he was a resident uh, in school, he decided to take up the uh, hobby of baking bread. And so his wife, Laura, taught him how to bake bread. And being Jeff, um, I know this doesn't sound Uh, like it goes with the personality of a doctor, but he's a little bit lazy. And so he just (laughs) kept dropping off parts of the process. And oh my God. Uh Yeah, it's hilarious. Um, But he was working like a hundred hours a week as a doctor in a hospital and baking bread. And so, um, you know, I think what happened is he just started storing the dough because he would have a shift and he wouldn't be able to get to it. And then it got longer and longer and longer. And so the premise of our bread is that you mix up a big batch. So we typically about enough for four one pound loaves or even Mm -hmm. more in Mm -hmm. some cases. You're just dumping all the ingredients into a large container Stirring it up, we have a, it's a no need bread. So you're just stirring mm-hmm. just until everything is incorporated. You let that rise so that the yeast can do its business. Cover it up. In some cases, you can use it right away. In other cases, you, you need to refrigerate it to firm it up a, a little bit. Um, and mm-hmm. then you can store that dough from anywhere from five days to two weeks, depending on the dough that you're making. So 
uh, with the dough that you're talking about that's on your website, right. it's four ingredients, water, salt, yeast, and flour. Um, and that's it. You put that in the bucket, you stir it up, and that dough can be stored for up to two weeks. And that's the whole thing with our bread. So that when you want a piece, uh, when you want to bake a loaf of bread, you just pull a piece out, let it rest, and bake it, and you have dough on the ready. I love that. I think the hardest part about the whole recipe is just right now finding the yeast and finding the flour. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, exactly. And so we have lots and lots of questions from our mm. readers that they've asked mm-hmm. us. Can we ask some of you? Sure, yeah. I think the one that relates to what Renee just said, some people are saying because flour is so scarce mm. and so is yeast, can they make half a batch? Absolutely. You can. Nice. Um, you know, our uh, the first book that we wrote, uh, Artisan Bread in Five Minutes a mm-hmm. Day, we did only in cup measures because it was a long time ago and the scale yeah, back in the day, back in the day yeah. when scales were you know exclusively used in Europe uh, they were way ahead of us mm-hmm. um, but Americans are now baking with weights which is amazing it's just every time you bake a loaf it's more consistent um, but it also makes scaling a recipe much, much easier. So our new edition Mm -hmm. of that book has weights. And so if you have that book, um, you just cut the recipe in half. Again, it's easier if you're doing it by weight, but you can do it by the cups as well. And it absolutely works. You don't have the same time savings because the whole premise is that you're making a big batch of dough. And so you're doing Mm -hmm. all the work once for all of the other loaves. Mm-hmm. So it's not quite as much time savings, but absolutely can be done. So would the dough rest on the counter for the same amount of time for a half recipe? Absolutely, because the yeast, mm. despite um, you know how much dough you're making, the yeast still has to do its thing. So having mm-hmm. said that, if you're using warm water in your recipe, Uh, the yeast will activate sooner or faster. If you're using cold water, it takes the yeast longer to rise. And so both of those things are fine. Um, Some people actually like the flavor of a dough that um, rises or ferments slowly. And so using cold water is their go-to. But yes, Mm -hmm. you still need to let the dough rise for the full amount of time. Zoe, what if you did make the full batch of dough, but wanted to freeze part of it? Could you do that or will that retard the yeast? Yeah, it does retard the yeast, but that's kind of what you're going for. So, you know, if you want, and the other thing is that it also stops the fermentation. So some people like the flavor of the dough after one to maybe three days um, fermentation, and then they'll freeze it. I usually freeze it in like one pound packets so that it's manageable when you're taking it out of the freezer. Um, But it's a great way to sort of lock in that flavor profile that you like. Um, When I first met Jeff, he was storing his dough for 30 days. Oh my. And um yeah, whoa. <laughs> and, and then we decided to put to to create a book out of this. I was like there is no way I'm putting my name on a book with you know <laughs> telling people they're going to store this dough for 30 days just because it's a pretty funky dough. Yeah. Mm. You can do it. Absolutely. And Jeff still does. Um, And it's totally fine in terms of safe, but it is very sour and very funky. So I like my dough more like in the first week and he likes his Mm. really extreme. So, so, you know, you be you, decide (laughs) what you like in terms of flavor. But um, yeah. A freezing, it's a great option. Mm-hmm. Into the freezer it goes. How would I defrost it? Would I do that at room temperature or in the fridge? Well, I typically, if you are planning ahead, I would take it out of the freezer, put it in the refrigerator, and then treat it as if it's coming straight out of the original container. Um, you mm-hmm. know, so that it has 
defrosted in the refrigerator, it will still be cold. Um, and so you have to let it then, you shape it and then let it rest on the counter. Sure. If you have not planned ahead, you can let it rest on the counter and it will happen. All of that will happen a little bit faster. Um, but yeah, either way, it works. Very forgiving. This whole process is super forgiving, which is exactly why we did it, because we knew people were intimidated by bread baking and working with yeast. And mm -hmm. uh, there's really not, nothing scary about it. In fact, I think it's great fun. So we tried to create a recipe that was going to be as accessible and fun and lacking all of the sort of intimidation as possible. I love that. Another question we get a lot is, when do you add mix-ins? And another mm. question is, what are your favorite mix-ins to add to the master uh, recipe? Yeah. Well, okay, you can either add the mix-ins when, uh, you know, like raisins and nuts or olives and cheese or herbs and, you know, wherever, whatever you happen to have in the pantry right now, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, put it in there. So you can either add them when you're mixing the, the whole batch of dough, but then you have that flavor in all of your loaves. Right. The other way you can do it is to mix up your batch of dough, pull, you know, do the whole process of rise and refrigerate, and then pull out your piece of dough and you can add your mix-ins at that point. And the way that I do it is I just roll the dough out maybe to about a half an inch thick, doesn't matter what shape, half an inch thick, Put your top, put your flavorings, uh, let's just say raisins, um, on mm -hmm. the dough, roll it up into a log, and then um, roll it into a ball, and then knead it just a little bit. So like a few turns with the palm of your hand, just kneading those ingredients into the dough. When you do that, Mm -hmm. You then have to let that dough rest a little bit longer than the recipe says because you've kneaded all of the air that's mm. um, all those exactly. nice bubbles that you've created from letting it rise um, out of the dough. So you need to let the dough rise a little bit longer whenever you're handling it um, that much. And then once the bread is baked, how do you keep it? It depends on the kind of bread, but typically, like if you're doing a crusty boule, mm -hmm. you never want to cover that because um, if you were to put it into plastic, you're going to destroy that nice crispy crust that you've developed. So exactly. what I usually do, especially with a loaf that's just um, flour, salt, yeast, and water, uh, it's going, it's not going to last that long. It's best to have that baked fresh. And so maybe a day or two. Okay. And mm -hmm. what I do is I just lay the cut and down on a hard flat surface. So like a marble or even wood is fine um, to sort of make sure that that cut end is not going to be exposed to air so it won't dry out. Uh, the other thing that you can do if you do want to cover it is just put it into a paper bag, not plastic. Plastic um, mm -hmm. will really just destroy any kind of crispy crust that you get. So what about those bags that you get that have actually holes in them, small holes? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do those work? Yeah. I mean, the ones that um, that you would get from like a bakery or something. Yeah, and, or a King Arthur or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can get a hold of them, there are some, you know, bags, the perforated bags like that, or um, cloth bags you can also find. Um, so yeah, absolutely. If you have them, terrific. This is just, you know, everybody has a paper bag laying around. So um, right. if you're uncertain what was in that paper bag beforehand, I usually uh, wrap the bread in a bit of parchment paper first. Just so. <laughs> yeah. Right? No flavor transfer. <laughs> right. Right? Back to that funkiness topic. Yes, exactly. And so- Zoe, I always bake bread on a cast iron skillet turned upside down because oh. I'm too cheap to buy a baking stone. 
Um, awesome. But and I yeah. use a baking stone. I follow instructions. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> and I don't. Um, <laughs> and a lot of our readers don't as well. Thank you very much uh-huh. because they don't have either. Mm-hmm. So can they use like a standard baking sheet? Or what would you recommend? Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So a cast iron is great because cast iron is thick enough to retain heat. And so the whole premise of having a baking stone um, on your bread is that one, it retains heat so that when you're opening the oven, mm-hmm. your, your heat, the heat isn't just sort of like rushing out of there because you want a really nice hot oven to, to get any oven spring out of your dough. It it retains the heat and it also conducts heat really well. And so again, you're giving that dough a really nice jolt of heat, which is going to give you a nice mm-hmm. oven spring to your bread. So a cast iron or a really well preheated ceramic or a steel um, okay. is going to is going to be the best way to bake your bread. Uh, a, just a regular old uh, jelly roll pan or cookie sheet is so thin that it doesn't really retain or conduct heat that well. So you can absolutely do it. It's just if you get into this and you're trying to like get that really great crispy crust, I would say either do what you're doing is flipping a cast iron pan upside down or they sell like terracotta, unglazed terracotta tiles Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. that are really inexpensive. Anything that's sort of thick enough and will conduct heat um, is the way to go. And I don't know if a lot of our new readers and also listeners know this, but also with the same bread, you can make a phenomenal brioche. And Zoe was kind enough to come over to Connecticut with the one and me to be able to to make the cinnamon rolls. And you can make cinnamon rolls with it. You can make monkey bread. Both of those recipes are on the site. And there's so many other things that you can make with artisan bread in five minutes a day. So realize that, guys, it's beyond just a regular plain boule. Yeah, with our recipes, I mean, in our books, each one of them has about 100 recipes. So Mm -hmm. it's just as easy as what I described before, where you dump everything into a bucket and stir it up. It's just a different list of ingredients. So like the recipe that you and I made together, which was so much fun, by Mm -hmm. the way, we have to do that again, um, (laughs) is just we added butter and eggs and a, a, a bit of honey for some sweetness. But exactly the same way. We just dumped it in and stirred it up. It's nothing more, you know, difficult than any of the others. So all the same method, just different lists of ingredients to get a different type. That would be called an enriched dough. So that kind of dough would only last in the refrigerator for up to five days because it has the eggs and the butter in it. And after that, just like Renee said, you would want to freeze any leftover dough because um, with eggs, you just don't want to play around with that. So we just freeze it and that dough will last for about three weeks, four weeks in the freezer. Mm -hmm. Well, Zoe, we want to thank you so much for coming on, answering our readers' questions in the special time of intense, enhanced bread baking. Thank you so much. Thanks, Zoe. Yeah. Oh, it was absolutely my pleasure and happy baking. Zoe Francois, along with her writing partner, Jeff Hertzberg, is an unequivocal bread maestro. She's written seven artisan bread and five minute a day cookbooks. And you can find Zoe online at zoebakes.com, as well as on her stunning Instagram feed. Her handles are at zoebakes and at bread in five. And that's the numeral five. This podcast is produced by Overt Studios. And our producer is the indefatigable Adam Claremont. You can reach Adam and Overt Studios at overitstudios.com. And remember to subscribe to Talking With My Mouthful and listen to us wherever you go. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Abio Kitchen. You can try Abio right now by going to abiokitchen.com and using the code LC15 for a whopping 15% off of all Abio cookware. <laughs>